Hello Explorer and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk about Linux. Is this the year of the Linux desktop? Well, we might be able to figure that one out for you. But for me, it was the year of the Linux desktop. I have switched over to using Linux full time. I've not run Windows since January and I'm pretty satisfied with it. Today I'm running Ubuntu and we are going to use a tool called distc where as in the sea there is a bunch of different kind of fish like linuxes so there is so many different variations of linuxes so they have about 400 different distributions to test or combinations to test so linux generally contains of a core which is the linux kernel and that is what is starting everything up and has different interfaces to different um, devices on your um, machine. And then on top of that, you could put a file system and you can put a bunch of different things in order to create something that you can work with. And one of those things are window managers. And we're going to see here that there is a bunch of different uh, variations on window managers even if you choose a kernel and then you choose to install that Linux with that kernel you can still have different kind of uh, desktop depending on which window manager you're choosing and another part is also the packaging how is your system packaged uh, so there is a bunch of different package managers out there which will help you download packages and install them on your machine. Usually we see apt, we see uh, RPM, we see Pac-Man. Those are the most common, but I've seen other um, variations in the installations as well. So I will go through a bunch of them and I will have a video as a member feed with all of them. And then I will pick out a couple of them and have in the video that is going live to the public. So if you want to watch the long version, you become a member and watch that one. Otherwise, you can watch this video with just uh, a couple of them. So let's see here. Uh, we start with Alpine Linux. Alpine Linux is only console no disk desktop and it's mostly used for servers if you want to install and package something in a docker image you use alpine linux because it's small and you can install a bunch of different packages that is already available uh, through the normal apk which is the package manager but the actual linux that you install is so small that it's actually just 10.5 megabytes and they are really trying to keep that as lean as possible so you can put your applications and start them fast in a Docker environment. Big Linux KDE. So this is using the KDE window manager and packaging because KDE is more than a window manager. It has a bunch of libraries and things that use. It makes it easier for a couple of applications to actually be built. Uh, it has a pretty cool boot up sequence. I really like that one. And what is interesting with this is that we, of course, have notable applications like LibreOffice and VLC, which is really good to have. But this big Linux already has Steam and Lutris installed. So if you connect your Steam account to this, you could probably start gaming already. Uh, I'm not sure because I didn't install it natively, so I can't say if the graphics drivers are working well or so. But I think it's a very interesting thing to have those toolings already installed and prepared to be the Linux of choice for gamer, perhaps. Um, it's using console with ZSH in um, as the terminal manager and it's about 2.9 gigabytes in size and it's using the package manager of pa, pa mac which is a little bit different from the other one i haven't seen that in a lot of different um, operating system or different packaging so that was a new one so if you're trying big linux you will probably need to be acquainted with this package manager 
Synth OS Stream. This one was something that I was a little bit disappointed of because you couldn't even install it in the distro C. You needed a drive with more than uh, 20 gigabytes in order to install it, so there were no way to test it. Maybe the maintainer of distro C will fix that later on, but as of now, I know that this is something that is similar to the um, uh, Alpine Linux. It's more suitable for the things that are running in Docker containers and that you want to package things and run them in an, a Red Hat environment, but you want a very min minimal install. So I think that is the main focus of CentOS 3. Debian. This is my favorite server operating system. I run them on a bunch of machines at the moment and I maintain hundreds of machines with Debian on them. So I really like this one. But if you're going to run it as a desktop, you have a bunch of different options for your window managers. You can run XFCE standard and the mate, uh, LXQT, LXDE, KDE, GNOME and Cinnamon. Uh, the, st the standard installation is only the console version, so you don't get the GUI there. In the Cinnamon, uh, you have a very reduced amount of settings to choose by, choose of but you already have LibreOffice installed, various Linux games already installed, and you have Remina, which is a really good uh, VNC client uh, already installed in your system. So I, I like this packaging. Uh, might have wanted to see a couple of more applications to install by default, but it's a good mix up. Uh, it's using Xterm as its uh, console manager and it's about 3.3 gigabytes in pure install. And of course it's using the APT package manager. And Debian is pretty much the default standard uh, layer where you have APT as a package manager and then you build other um, distros of that. So De Debian was the old hat, the, the one that started APT. Elementary OS 7.0. This is one that is actually tailored for people that are coming from different other operating systems. So they should feel convenient and be e easily introduced to the uh, operating system. They are touting a very simple install, a very simple uh, operating and everything should be feel very native to you if you come from other systems. And I would say that if you're running Max today, you might be inclined to use elementary OS because the GUI is very Mac-like. Uh, you still have the menu similar to Windows, but you have this Mac tray and so on. The settings are a little bit in the Mac arena as well. It's using 2.0 gigabytes of install, no notable applications installed by default. And APT is the package manager for this one. Fedora. This is the uh, open source or was the open source version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. It's already installed with LibreOffice. It has dark mode and theming. Very commonly um, designed uh, console and also settings for being a Red Hat system. It's about 5.2 uh, gigabytes in install and using the RPM package manager. Gento, my favorite work operating system, but this is not anything for the faint of heart. This has no GUI installed from start. It's only 66 megabytes in install and it's using the Emerge package manager, but in Gno Gento, you could install whatever window manager you want and you could install whatever packages you want because Emerge is pretty much a very thin client to download packages and build them on your system. So everything that you are running on your system will be native and it will be supported because if it can compile, it will work. Um, you might have problems with some packages having uh, compile conflicts and might not uh, compile correctly. And it is uh, an author operating system that takes time in order to get up and running. So I used 
pretty much a work day to get my Gento up and running the first time. But the good part with Gento is when you have everything installed, so you have a world file with all your applications, and if you store everything in your home directory, switching to a new machine for me is pretty much copying the home directory, copying the world file and the make configuration file, and then starting a compile again. And it will make me a new Gento system that works pretty much uh, as before on a new uh, machine, which is pretty amazing that it can actually just migrate to a new machine without much hassle. Linux Mint, this is another one that is very commonly used. I tried it with the Mate uh, in install and with that window manager it looked very much like Windows 7. It has dark mode support, it, it comes installed with LibreOffice and the console uh, is X-Term, so very common standard there. It's about 2.0 gigabytes installed and it's using the APT package manager. So if you want to have something that a lot of people are running, Linux Mint is one of those. Nix OS 21.11 GNOME. So I'm using the GNOME window manager. It comes with a couple of them. It has dark mode and the GNOME default. Uh, settings pages it's about 2.6 gig uh, 2.0 gigabytes install no notable extra applications it has the uh, xterm uh, console manager so nothing strange there but the package manager is nix so the nix os is using nix as the package manager so if you are uh, want to try something new and when it comes to package managers, this is an odd one, but I had a friend that ran uh, Nix in their system, not natively Nix OS, but they are using Nix as the package manager for different packages. So I have heard that this is a very nice package manager. So maybe try this if you want to try something new. Pop OS 2.22.04 main. This is uh, a very interesting install. It should be very capable to run games and so on. Nothing notable was installed on it. You have LibreOffice, but no other na notable applications. It supports dark mode. It has the standard GNOME default settings pages. It's 2.5 gigabytes of native install. It's using Xterm as its console manager and APT as the package manager. Slackware. It is uh, Slackware KDE, so it has the KDE default settings. It supports dark mode. It has the GIMP already installed, so uh, that is the only notable application I could find. It's 3.6 gigabytes. It's using the FCE terminal window and the RPM package manager. What is interesting with Slackware, or at least the old Slackware, were that you actually had more support to compile native packages. Uh, of course, any Linux uh, operating system supports compiling by yourself, but Slackware in the olden days didn't have any package manager. It pretty much was download the source and compile it yourself. Um, but they might have uh, uh, deviated from that on later years. Tails. Stable. So this one was an interesting one. This is the operating system with Tor already built in. Everything is privacy native. So if you install this operating system, if you send mail, if you go through the uh, web browser and so on, everything will go through the Tor network. If you don't want to have this as your native install, why not install it in a virtual machine so you can use it for your bank transactions and so on. This seems like a really cool operating system. It's a KDE and using the KDE default settings. Notable applications installed are Inkscape, LibreOffice and GIMP. So you have a couple of options there for creating media or writing documents. It's 1.3 gigabytes of install, so pretty small. XFCE is the terminal window and you have APT for your package manager. 
So now I've gone through and tested a bunch of different Linux operating systems with different window managers, console windows and package managers. Perhaps you found something that you really liked or perhaps you want to try out DistroC yourself. I sent a little um, donation their way because I think it's a very nice way of being introduced to more Linux and trying different operating system out and, and see what you like. Um, I hope that you found this video interesting. If you want to watch the long one, of course, th that is available as a member. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.